Growing controversy this morning on the campaign trail. The Republican candidates for the White House are coming under fire for not responding to booing during the Florida debate. Take a listen. Yeah, I, I, I would say any type of sexual activity has absolutely no place in the military. And the fact that they're making a point to include it as a provision. All right, well, over the weekend, Herman Cain was asked about why he and none of the other candidates responded to the audience on ABC's This Week. Here's what he said. In retrospect, because of the controversy it has created and because of the different interpretations that it could have had, yes, that problem, that would have been appropriate. But at the moment, it was not the focus of the people up there on that stage, I can assure you. Well, the other reason that we're talking about this is because the president also came out over the weekend and he said, you know what? The commander in chief must stand up for our soldiers. And joining us now to talk about this and the upcoming election is campaign law attorney Sarah Rumpf. Great to see you, Sarah. Thanks for coming in this morning. Good morning. All right. So you were actually in the audience during this debate and you were sitting, as you told me, just a row or two behind this gentleman who was booing. Um, a couple rows back. It wasn't one or two, but we could very clearly hear that it was just one or two people. And and I, I personally was horrified. Everybody around me gasped in shock and was hissing and, yo, be quiet, you idiot, how dare you? Like, that's totally rude. Um, it, it, it got a very, very harsh reaction from, from the people in the audience around him. And it's interesting because what this has blown up into, as we've seen over the last week or so, is that the audience was booing. But that was not what happened. No, I mean, there were um, about 5,000, over 5,000 people in the audience. And I, while it's not great that two people were booing, it was two people out of 5,000. So to say, for the president to say that the audience was booing a soldier because he was gay, it's completely wrong. And was it your impression that the people who were booing were booing the question, the content of the question, or the actual soldier? Because I think there's some confusion over that as well. Well, I mean, I can't read minds, but if you go back and look at the entire tape, um, when the soldier says that he's in Iraq, no one boos. When he says he's gay, no one boos. When he says that he had to keep that secret, no one boos. When he says that he's now able to openly serve as a gay soldier, no one boos. It's only after he specifically asked about the don't ask, don't tell policy and asked whether the candidates would roll that back and reinstitute that policy that the booing started. So uh, you, you can interpret that how you like, but uh, to me, it, it's, it's not quite as clear cut as the president was trying to make it out to be. In your mind, should the candidates have stood up and said something at the debate right in that moment, hey, that's not appropriate, quit, whatever? Well, you know, I'm not I'm not entirely sure that they really could all hear it. Um, Megan Kelly and Brett Baer, who were the uh, Fox News moderators, did say that they heard it, but it wasn't all that loud. And if you think about how acoustics are set up at a stage, um, you go to a play, even back in Shakespeare's time, the, the sound is set up to go out from the stage, not to the stage. So some of the candidates have said that they heard it. Um, um, I know when I've done any kind of public speaking, you're so focused on what you're saying, and I'm sure being on a national stage with a presidential debate is a lot of pressure. They're probably just focused on what they're going to answer next, not extraneous crowd distractions. All right, Sarah, I got to ask you about Chris Christie because John and I were having this conversation about 15 minutes or so ago. You know, he he couldn't have been any more clear that he was not going to run, and now all of a sudden we're hearing, oh, you know what, he might run. Is that is that a deal breaker for a lot of people who would maybe have considered voting for him before, who are now going to say, you know? What? You can't make up your mind, buddy. Well, it's, it's very common for a candidate who gets late in the race to have made a, a comment before that he was not getting in. Um, and it's something that, you know, political opponents will, will make noise about for a couple days, but it really doesn't have any traction in the long term. Um, you know, something that might have traction is the accusation that he's abandoning the people of New Jersey after a term. That's the kind of thing that sticks more than various statements about whether or not you're going to run for political office. All right, Sarah Rumpf, always nice to talk to you, our political analyst. Thanks so much for coming in so early this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks, Amy.